So we're very glad to have Joaquin Moraga from Princeton University, who's going to tell us about toroidalization principles for KLT singularities, and we'll aim to end an hour from, from now. Okay, well, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a pleasure to uh, talk to you, at least via Zoom. So I will talk about um, toroidalization principles for KLT singularities. So in a few slides, you will understand what toroidalization principles mean. So, um, so I will talk about especially three things, uh, the regional fundamental group of singularity, then the toroidalization of the fundamental group. And then um, if there is some time, I may, I may mention some connections with, um, with termination of flips so rather. Um, just if we have enough time. So you take an algebraic singularity and uh, for each, well, I will be working over the complex numbers, uh, and, but I will mention if each result falls over the complex numbers or algebraic to the closed field. So for each analytic neighborhood of X, you can define the regional fundamental group or the regular fundamental group, which is just the fundamental group of the smooth loss side of this analytic neighborhood. And then you can take the limit of all these pi, the, these fundamental groups. And this is what we call the um, regional fundamental group of the singularity. And we will, <clears throat> so we denoted by, by this thing here, by ref uh, X of X. So the whole time I will be thinking about closed points, okay? And if X has an isolated singularity, at X is just the classic uh, fundamental group for me. Okay, so people I think usually denote this by local X, X. Okay? But this regional one, I mean, we call this regional one. Uh, I didn't invent the name; it was one of my co-authors. Uh, it will surject into the into the um, into the classic fundamental group of the of the link. Okay. So, I mean, what we know about this? Oh well, before before telling you what we know, I can I, I also want to introduce the notion for pairs. So you have a pair. So it's a couple where X is a normal quasi projective variety and delta is an effective divisor such that. Uh, Tx plus delta is QKT. So, you know, we, we work with this a lot in the minimal model program because, I mean, when you do a junction or things like this, this, this boundary uh, appears naturally. Okay. So, so, it's good to, you know, when you have a notion for sort of algebraic varieties, it's also try to it's good to try to understand the notion for pairs, the corresponding. So, we will do something really similar now. Uh, we define the regional fundamental group of the pair uh, to be this thing that looks quite monstrous, and, like the first time, but. Um, let me just keep sliding. So, so essentially, you delete the whole support of the divisor, and then you take the pi one of the smooth loss side minus the support, and then you quotient by certain normal subgroup, um, which is generated by some by some prime by, by some loops that are a prime around the prime divisor. So, 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 so could I could I pause here a second? And say there's a base point. Okay, so you are so there's no base point now, right? Or, the base, sorry, the base point should be x. Okay. So, and the base point is inside. Uh, uh, great. And the base point is inside delta, uh, or it's not. No, 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 sorry. Well, if delta is away, you know, you can always treat okay. such the, the restriction is trivial. So you, you go back to the previous slide. Uh, great. Sorry, I, I'm a bit confused. You said the base point is x, but um, x won't lie in the smooth locus. Exactly. But how can you take, what does it mean to say that your base point is x if x, if you're taking pi one of a, Space not containing x. Well, once you think you can take any point in the smooth loss side, and the fundamental group will be the same. So I, I guess I guess I have a question. Do you have a fundamental group, or do you have a fundamental group defined up to conjugation? Uh, you you actually have a fundamental group. So I mean, when you shrink enough, then you can take any base point inside this smooth loss side. And but all... isn't it the case that if you change the base point, you can't you change the group by conjugation? Well, they will be isomorphic. I just care about isomorphism class of this group. Okay, but, but, but you, thanks. I, I think you, thank you. And, and, and then is it sort of convenient? I, I sort of think that the fundamental groupoid, I think if it's like a groupoid rather than a group is convenient. Right, that. exactly. I mean, you can, you can think about it as a groupoid if you want. So, I mean, when, when I say base point, I mean base in terms of this analytic neighbors, not the base point of the by one uh, after, after restricting to the smooth loss side. Okay, so, so, so I should, so, you, so you're saying, Maybe if I want to, I can think of the point as being infinitely near. And then there's the ambiguity, exactly. Jesse. Jesse is saying there is an ambiguity and you just keep that, and you remember the ambiguity some, in whatever way you see fit. I exactly. Guess. Okay, great. Is that okay, Jesse? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, great. this definition may look weird, but I mean, essentially what we're doing is, um, well, then we define the fundamental group of, of the pair to be the inverse limit of these fundamental groups. 
and one can uh, regard this this fundamental group as um, well, essentially, the, the normal subgroups of this fundamental group will correspond to covers under which the pullback of the pair is still a pair. Okay, so I will explain this in the next slide. For instance, if you have a, a log smooth pair, like a pi one regular of a n with, let's say, uh, n transverse or hydroplanes, and then you choose this coefficient C, C1 Cn, then what you get is just uh, Z mod M1Z plus C mod M2, uh, M2Z and so on. And what is, this, what is the relation between the MIs and the CIs? Well, the MI is the largest integer such that one minus uh, one over MI is less than or equal than CI. So essentially, it's how much you can ramify along this co-dimension one point such that the boundary is still a boundary, so it's still effective. So when you pull back the canonical plus the boundary, you still get something that is effective. So, so maybe let me pause to make sure I digest the, what this is telling me. So in the case where the CIs are all one, so just like to make a straight, uh, which I'm guessing you're not going to want later anyway. But let's say the CIs are one, then you're then you're you're allowing yourself loops around each of the hyperplanes and hyperplanes. And now when you have these other things, you're saying okay, you can branch over the loops, just not over the hyperplanes. But you're really limiting how much branching you have, exactly. and that's going to really mess up what your branch not limit what your uh -huh. branches are. And if you think about it, you're going to be left with what this is saying. And so log exactly. smooth. And when you say log smooth, I should think really should in this case I think of HIs are uh, actual normal crossings to each other or actual smooth and normal crossings to each other, and the CIs are just rash are um, are real numbers or can these HIs? Right, be crazy we're numbers? mostly interested in the CI in the interval zero one. Right. And if you just see a larger, maybe like actually my, my, my isomorphism doesn't work, so I should like see between zero and one and not one. If you right. choose CA1, uh, you get like a set, uh, like n copies of set. If Which is good. Say, okay, good. As you kind of expect. Right. And now they become, and then the, these H1 through HN are the coordinate hyperplanes in AN. Ah, uh, you can, yeah. You, I mean, you can you can assume that that's, that's the case. Oh, but, you mean, but, but can they be singular? Like, can they be really crazy hypersurfaces? Oh, if, if, no, I mean, if, if you have a crazy hypersurfaces, you will get different groups. I cannot tell you exactly what. what okay. Well, so absolutely. That's allowed in your, in your definition. Oh. These yes. things could be really crazy. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, in my definition, the HIs can be arbitrary. Right. So I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a bit confused on one point, and I think I just misunderstood the definition. The definition that you put up a slide or two ago, it looked like um, this relative pi one only depended on the support of delta. No, no, because then you, you question by this, this, um, this gamma p to the np, and the- Ah, the sorry, I, I missed the np. They, um, okay. I, uh, I misread the definition. Thank you. That's an important point that I missed. Actually, I, actually, I ignored that, and I shouldn't have. Can you go back to that again? Because I. Oh yeah. So so, the, so, the so, so I, right. So that's the thing where the that's the key thing. Uh -huh. uh, uh, ah. Okay. Great. So oh. Okay. Ah. So that's the thing which is going to make things interesting. And why? Okay. Great. And you'll tell us later why we should have made this crazy definition. Like why? Uh -huh. this, ah. Good. Okay. Great. So and, and everyone should feel free, of course, to go to if there's things where you want to go back, just sure, yeah. uh, feel free to ask them and uh, that's great. Okay. So this is the, the whole remark. I mean, you, I mean, I don't think about the definition, I usually think it this way. So uh by one regular corresponds to final Galois cover uh, on which the pullback of kx plus delta remain a log pair. So essentially, when you pull back kx plus delta by one of these Galois cover, you obtain ky plus delta y, and delta y is still effective. So essentially these conditions here, you can see that essentially is telling you that you want to ramify just enough that we on hook, which will tell you that the divisors that you get upstairs are still effective. So, so, so just so I make sure I understand, uh, uh, what this is also saying is that if once I take these covers, uh, the M looks like if I take, then it's like somehow I should think of this as being uh, at that point, simply locally, simply connected. Once I like, there's a exactly. you know, local right. universal cover. So, for instance, any any let's say any Weierstrass Cartier divisor would be an actual Cartier divisor. Right. Are there more questions? Well, if not, uh, let's continue. So now let's talk about um, well, this in this slide um, I will talk about log discrepancies. So essentially, the log discrepancy is a measurement of the singularities of the pair. So you take a prime divisor uh, on a on a projective on a projective uh, model of X, and then you define the discrepancy to be this number. So essentially, what we're doing is that we're pulling back the X plus delta, and then we get let's say K Y plus delta Y, and then the log discrepancy of the prime divisor E tells you how close is this coefficient to one. 
So how close is this to one? So if this actually one, the log discrepancy will be zero. If it is farther from one, the, the log discrepancy tells you the distance to, to, to one, okay? So essentially what we're doing here is that this frame divisor, you can like sort of think about it as like tangent directions along the singularity. And then this number is telling you like how singular, I mean, like how bad the singularity behaves on those tangent directions, okay? So we will say that the singularity scale T is all the log discrepancies are positive. So essentially you never, you never hit one when you pull back. You never have uh, devices with coefficients equal or larger to one. And we say that it's log canonical if all the log discrepancies are non-negative. So uh, I should mention that one doesn't need to check all the log discrepancies like because of course it's like a, like a, a very ugly space. Um, one just needs to take a log resolution of the pair in some sense and just check the ones that appear on some log resolution. Okay, so we will write the LT and LC to abrogate uh, Kawata log terminal and log canonical. So these are like the classic singularities that will appear when you run a minimal model program. Okay, so so why am I introducing this? Because now I want to tell you about, uh, oh, before before we jump to, I mean, before we go back to the topology, let me give you some examples of KLT singularities. So quotient singularities will be KLT. And you think the cone over a final variety is, is also KLT. I mean, under the mild condition that the, polarization that you choose has to be uh, Q equivalent to a multiple of the anti-canonical. So, so like final cones over final varieties will be, it will give you KLT uh, singularities. And examples of like, canonical singularities are cones over local area of pairs or local area of varieties. And then if you quotient by a final group a, a, a LC singularity, you still get an LC singularity. So both notions behave well under finite, finite quotients. Could you give um, an example of something that's not log canonical? Uh, the, the cone over anything that is anything of general type, for instance, the cone of a curve of genus two, it's not log canonical. So essentially, that's the idea, right? They, we have a record, uh, like a trichotomy. We have Fanos, Calabi-Yaus, and general type, and then the KLT, LC, and non-LC corresponds to KLT is the local version of Fano, LC is the local version of calabi and non-LC is the local version of general type. Okay, so the cone over an adversarial curve of degree n is KLT, and the cone over an elliptic curve is log canonical but not KLT. Okay, and I mean the philosophy is that KLT and log canonical singularities are nice, and any any singularities that is not log canonical uh, will be arbitrarily bad, in, in, in some sense, right? Because because the varieties of general type are arbitrarily bad in, in almost any sense that you can think about. Um, well, the importance of, of KLT singularity relies in these two parts. So if you take, if you start with a minimum, with a smooth variety and then you run this minimum model program, what you obtain at the end will have KLT singularity. So essentially, I mean, it's wide enough that, that any minimal model, any minimal model will have KLT singularities. And the second one is that most vanishing terms for smooth varieties also hold for varieties with KLT singularity. And one can be, you know, I mean, try to go even farther. Some people say that any term, any term for smooth varieties also holds for KLT for for KLT varieties, if you if you write the right theorem, <laughs> okay. So so well, this happened really often, right? We have like several years ago, we have uh, Bobil decomposition, right? And last year it was proved in full generality for varieties with KLT singularity. So you know it's, it happens very often that we can push from smooth to KLT uh, all the important theorems of algebraic geometry. So the question is often state the right. So even the statement doesn't. Do you need do you need cleverness for the statement? You have to figure out yes, the right. Yes, yes. In or? most cases, right. In most cases, it's exactly the same statement one hold you need to, to, I mean, to twist it a little bit with something. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the topology of singularity. So in 2010, Kolar and Kapovic proved that if you take any finally presented group, then you can find, uh, I, I should say, XX here. So, so you, you can find a singularity of dimension six, such that the regional fundamental group uh, is G. Actually, they, they do it with the local fundamental group. So, well, at this point, you should think, well, we're screwed. I mean, the topology of singularity is, <laughs> is arbitrarily ugly, right? Because of course you always get something finally presented because algebraic varieties have structural CW complexes. So, so this says that, I mean, it is hopeless to study this. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a few years later, uh, using mostly uh, techniques from projective geometry, Xin Yang Xu proved that uh, the regional fundamental group of a KLT singularity has finite profinite completion. So if you take if you take this group, you take the profinite completion, and then you get something finite. So essentially, is that the same as residually finite? That they're only fi that the that there's only exactly yes. Okay. 
And then um, uh, two years ago, Lucas Brown proved that actually, if you start with a KLT singularity, uh, you get a, a finite group. So the, the, fun the local fundamental groups of KLT singularities are finite in particular, the universal core of the singularity will be, again, a KLT singularity. So it will be in particular algebraic. So if and only if, wait, that, wait, is that, did, did I, do I understand that correctly? That's saying, yeah, that's, yeah, wait, provided, oh, I see. Provided that, oh, got it, sorry. I, KLT, I, it could be, okay, it it's going one direction. It could, it could be infinite, right, KLT, got it. So it could be infinite, but it's this finite profinite completion. But if uh -huh. it's honestly finite, then it's KLT. And then presumably the reason, and then the way in which you can construct it is you do something, with that finite thing to produce a cover, and then you do something like smooth. Okay, great. Oh, nice. Okay. So then, uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I have a question. Is the 2009 result strictly stronger than the 2012 result? Yeah, of course. There are, there are groups that, uh, that have profinite, that the profinite completion is finite. And I mean, one can do a construction starting with the Heisenberg, Heisenberg group and then doing some, some extra generators and relations, and then you, you can get something which is. Um, Infinite, but its profinite completion is fine. So, so the 2019 result is actually is actually strong. And then, actually, when when Lucas was working on this, I sent him an email. I, I didn't know that he was proving this result, but I sent him an email asking him this question. So, so you go through all the the. Um, so you go through all the um, KLT similarities of the same dimension. Right? I mean, this is something that we carry in the minimal model program because when you start running a minimal model program, then you start sort of changing the singularities of your variety, but you keep the dimension, right? I mean, the dimension doesn't change when, when you run the minimal model program for, let's say, a surface or a threefold, right? So, so we mostly care about, you know, uh, about the invariance once you fix the dimension. So what, what kind of groups you can get if you fix, um, if you fix the dimension? So actually in this, oops, I don't know what happened there. Actually, in this result of Lucas, he proved that any group appears. Any finite group. Okay. So, so, so this is like a this is like a Kolar Kapovich kind of thing where you construct it. It's like a recipe. Any finite group you produce, he gives some way of producing some local singularity that has that. Uh, it's, it's actually easier for finite groups because for finite yeah. groups, you can embed G inside GLN. Right? right, and then yeah. you take C n quotient by G, and it's not true that the pi one of these at the origin is isomorphic to G. Well, it's not true, but it's really close. Oh, um, I mean, it will be a homomorphic image of G, but then if you choose the embedding sort of clever, right, then you actually get this isomorphism, and this guy is KLT. Okay, but what's the problem with this argument? Is that if you change your G, you might have to increase N. That's okay. Oh, I see. You want to say okay. So the all oh, the alter of course is really big. Uh, I mean, G sits if G is a finite group of size a million, it sits it's in GL, right. GL a million. So that's right. Like, so n will blow up super fast. So so my question: If you fix n, uh, what groups do you see? And then well, now we have to go back to to 1870s. So Camille Jordan was studying differential equations when he proved this. Um, Actually, this comes from the uniqueness and, and existence of certain partial differential equations. It has, it has nothing to do with group theory. So he proved the following uh, uh, theorem. He proved that there exists a constant Cn, which only depends on n and satisfies the following. So you take a finite subgroup of Gln, and then there exists a normal evidence subgroup of index at most Cn and rank, and rank at most n. So essentially, this is saying that if you fix n, all the finite subgroups of Gln are almost abelian groups, right? I mean, there is this non abelian part. Uh, let's say the quotient of G by A. What, what's the, so, okay, index, I don't understand what that means. And then rank, what is the, the rank of a billion subgroup? What does that mean? Oh, so the rank of a final group is the least number of generators. Right. Okay, so essentially this is a billion of rank at most, at most N. And this is, let's say something that, I mean, is bounded in terms of the dimension. So if you if you stay in the same dimension, this uh, you can think about n as like some noise thing that is, is sort of controlled. Okay. So 
So actually, in, in 2007, Collins proved that if you can take CN equal n factorial whenever n is larger equal than 71, there is a certain range in which this uh, doesn't work, but I mean, like 3n factorial will make it. So essentially, you can think that any finite subgroup of, of any finite subgroup of GLN is like a is like a um, is a finite group of rank at most n and like the permutation group, right? So symmetry group of, of n variables. So this is. Is it, is it, Presumably Collins proof, like this proof does not use PDEs or does it? No, the, the proof of Collins, I think is, is, is use some reductions and then they check by computer the rest of the cases. I think that. Okay, great. This The statement makes me smile. The statement of this, like the 2007. So, so nowadays, uh, this problem of being almost a billion is known as the Jordan property. So if you have like, you know, any family of group that you can find these a billion groups inside that are almost the whole group, then uh, people call this the Jordan property for, for that family of groups. Okay, so um, also what happens with quotient singularities now? Well, if we get this corollary uh, on the nose, that if you take a quotient singularity, then the regional fundamental group admits a normal abelian subgroup index at most CN and rank at most N. And this is exactly because, as I mentioned before, I mean, a quotient singularity X will be just CN quotient by G. And in the general case, you always have that G will project into pi one regional of XX. So, so this one satisfies the Jordan property, and the Jordan property flows under projective homomorphism. So this one will this one will satisfy the Jordan. Property. Okay. So now we know that quotient singularity satisfies the the, fun, the fundamental group of quotient singularity satisfies the Jordan property, and then the um, well, this is what I um, mentioned and I just mentioned in the previous slide, and then the first main theorem I want to talk about is the following. So with three other causes, with Lucas Brown, Stefano Filippats, and Roberto Spaldi, we proved that the topology of TLT singularity, the fundamental of TLT singularity, satisfies the Jordan property. So there exists this constant, uh, such that if you take any n-dimensional TLT singularities, uh, in some part, uh, you may read generalized, you, you can forget about that. I forgot to delete this part. So one can generalize some notion of these singularities, but I mean, let's, let's not get into that. It's, it's just a really technical thing. Okay, so, so there is a short exact sequence um, where A is a billion of rank at most N and N has order of most N. So, yes. Okay, so let me, let, let me see if I can see it in, a, in, a, in your early example where you had uh, with the H's or with the coordinate things, certainly you had uh, a fundamental group which could be very big, uh, mm -hmm. but it was all abelian. And you're saying that's, that's that was a very friendly, that's a friendly group. That's the A and it's very friendly and it's really big, but we understand. Exactly. Right, right. And now, and now you can bound the unfriendly part, which is the quotient, which is the and furthermore, it's a, it's a normal subgroup. And uh -huh. friendly part. okay, got it. Okay, great. So essentially, I mean, somehow this is saying that I mean, when you work in the minimum mode program and you start with your smooth variety and run this this algorithm that I mean, that people work with in the in the MMP, I mean, topologically, you cannot actually tell that there are that there are TLT singularities because they topologically they just look like quotient singularities. So so this is some I mean I think this is like the I mean how how you think about this is so so there are three downsides to the previous term. So first uh, the proof actually uses um, the complex number. So I will I will sketch the proof in a few minutes. The second is that the isomorphism is not algebraic and not even realizable. So what I mean with realizable oh, what, what is the word isomorphism which isomorphism is not algebraic? Oh, the, let, let's say that the, I mean, we have that this is isomorphic to some group G that satisfies the condition. I don't, but okay. well, let, let, let me explain it in a second. So, Great. So, I mean, if, if you have, if you have some isomorphism or you can prove that, that pi one is isomorphic to some group G, right? I mean, in, from the perspective of geometers, what you really want to do is to find a map, right? An algebraic map from Y to X, such that if you look at the induced uh, induced morphism of fundamental groups, this is an isomorphism and this has the property that you want. So, I mean, in other words, what I wanted to have is to have, you know, some sort of smooth, like a map from a smooth germ to make LT singularity such that it's almost surjective. So that, that will be the dream, right? They start with the first example and say that there is this map from a smooth germ to a LT singularity that is almost rejective, and hence that implies the Jordan property. So, so, what so, so maybe related to that, then your 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 normal subgroup is not sort of canonically chosen. 
Exactly right. My, my the isomorphism of the pi one that, that they choose is not a, is not canonically chosen in particular, and 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 the proof is that we just prove this abstractly. You know, I mean, we will we will go through the argument, and then one needs to choose certain listings, but these listings are not you know geometric. They're, you just need to choose some generators in certain other groups, and then you will get the the, the property. So, and finally, the control of, of the rank of A is not optimal. But I, I will get into this later. So, so leaving aside the rank, I mean, the rank of A is already bounded by M, right? Exactly. But but when when I wrote when we wrote this paper, we saw that there was a better invariant that will 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 bound the, the rank of A in a better way. So I, I will I will get into this afterwards. And, and what about the C of M? What about the unfriendly part? What 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 growth, What kind of growth? How terrible is that? Is here, just here. Uh, so we use we use Vilkar's boundedness of funny varieties in the middle of the proof. <laughs> so it gets very non-effective, just existential. But I, I should mention that uh, for a long time I, I tried to, to find you know TLT singularities with you know with really with really ugly non-abelian part. I call this N the non-abelian part. Almost it, it may be abelian, but I guess it's clear, right? Abelian part and the quotient will be non-abelian part. And I try to construct a teaching with with light and a part. And my best, the best I could do is cn equal three and four. So okay, that's pretty that's pretty big. That's like a pretty big. Uh -huh. yeah. So I mean essentially this is you know certain you, you start with certain nice singularity that has a lot of symmetries, and then you quotient by the whole uh, symmetry group uh, with, with three m three m variables, and you prove that the outcome is scaled. Great, and, and, and then somehow we expect that there'll be a paper from UCLA in a few years having it grow triply exponentially or something. Exactly, right. 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 By Totaro, and I hope that I will get the author too. <laughs> so, so now let, let me talk about the regularity of a log pair. So, so if you take a, a pair and then um, I will call the model regularity. So it will be, you will look at all the components which are Q Cartier and they lie in the round down of Delta. So essentially with this, I'm saying that they appear with coefficient one or larger in, in, in the boundary. And then the regularity is the maximum number of components that you can find that, that intersect non, um, that intersect non trivially. So for instance, if you have a three with with three, with the with the hyperplanes, right? Uh, this has regularity too. And if you delete one of them, then you just drop the regularity to one. Um, oh, I should say regularity three and two. If you drop one of them, then you drop the regularity to two. The, this model regularity. Okay, so. So the irrational regularity is the final follow. So instead of looking at just one model x delta, you start looking at all the possible blow ups of this. And then in all possible blow ups, you apply the definition of model regularity, and then you maximize along all the irrational models, uh, and then you subtract one. For instance, I mean, if you take the cone over an elliptic curve, then there is no divisor of equation one, right? But if you if you blow it up and then you pull back the canonical, right? So so here you have y, or let's call this c of cone. So this is a cone over an elliptic curve. Let me write c e, and I will call this y. So if you, I will call this phi. So if you pull back k c e, you obtain k y plus e, which is isomorphic to your elliptic curve, right? And now the mo the model regularity here will be one. And the birational regularity of this one is zero with, with, because it's one minus one. Okay. So essentially this is trying to keep track of, of, of well, when you grow up these things and they just see divisors with coefficient one, you can sort of create a manifold based on those divisors with coefficient one. And then this is keeping track of the dimension of that manifold. Okay, so the regularity at the point now, but if the point is KLT, you will never see these things with coefficient one. Because the definition of KLT is that when you pull back, the coefficients are strictly less than one. So we will we will look at all the possible ways to increment the boundary such that it's low canonical. So it, it hits the threshold, and then we look at the maximum of this regularity. Okay. So I, I know this, this definition is quite a lot, but and let me go to the next slide and I will give some examples. So something that one can prove is that the regularity of a KLT singularity is always between zero and n minus one. 
Okay, so so if you are used to work with toric singularities, um, toric singularities has have regularity n minus one when you put the toric divisors. Like the torus invariant divisors will give you something of so every n dimensional toric singularity has uh, has regularity n minus one. So the regularity is sort of measuring how close are you from being a toric singularity. The largest the, the regularity, the closer to toric you are, the smaller the regularity, you you will well, you will be far from a toric singularity. <laughs> I mean, um, well actually the other extreme we also know what the, the answer is. So if you, if you have a TLT pair, we say that it's exceptional if there is a unique divisional evaluation through through X. I, I shouldn't say through X, I, I should say mapping to X to be more precise here mapping 2x, and for which we can have log this type of t0 for some, in, uh, I mean, for some boundary, which is obtained by increasing delta. So here v is largely equal to delta. Okay, so this definition sounds like, you know, really, um, um, it's not like you can cook up easily an example, but you all know examples of these singularities. Actually, the E6, E7, and E8 singularities are exceptional. So the whole idea here, is that you have the okay maybe four five six okay perfect <laughs> yeah that's it six uh, well, so, so so right now I'm just going to um it, this definition I can ignore the definition just think that e sixty seventy eight are examples right that's because I'm not getting a you can think about higher analogs of this of this yes exactly so, I mean for instance quotienting smooth points by certain exceptional groups will give you. So if you start with this singularity and here is the resolution, right? And then you start adding a boundary to the singularity, then the only the only the, the only divisor which will hit the threshold one first when you pull back B will be this one. And this is the only one that will so in some words, what I want to say is that this guy is getting more singular than the others uh, faster. So if there is if there is a unique uh, a unique divisor that over the singularity, which is getting more always more singular with respect to any boundary, that one that singularity will be exceptional. And of course, this doesn't happen for the AN singularity, right? The AN singularity looks something like this. You have X. If you pull back a, a boundary in one direction, right, then this one will get more singular. If you pull it, if you pull back the boundary in the opposite direction, then this one will get more singular first. Okay. So, and the point is that exceptional singularities, the definition of exceptional singularity is equivalent to having, um, okay, this is uh, um, something that I said before that if you have uh, a dimensional toric pair and you quotient by a quasi torus of dimension R minus N, um, wait, wait, um, Okay, this is very weird. I, I'm pretty sure there, there's something wrong here. You can forget about this. I should say it's a pair of them from CN quotienting by a quasi torus dimension N. I don't know where this <laughs> appears in my slides. Okay, so a toric singularity. So, what I wanted to say before is that an exceptional singularity is even only if the regularity is zero. So, the, if you get regularity zero, then this is a higher dimension analog of E6, E7, and E8. And if you get regularity n minus one, it's not necessarily toric. Toric implies regularity n minus one. But we have theorems that says that the opposite is sort of true. That if you have regularity n minus one, you're pretty close to be to a toric singularity. So, so these are like the two opposites, the two, like let's say the two, the, the, the two opposites of PLT singularities. And then every other PLT singularity will have some part exceptional, some part toric, and one needs to understand both of them to understand the singularity. So maybe can just because it seems like a useful thing to have in mind. What's an example of something that's not torque that we should think of as being really close to torque? Like what's what's a torque like singularity? A deformation of a torque singularity, for instance. Good. Like, I get, okay, that certainly is like torque. Okay, good. Is, right. that, is that what we should basically think of that the torque uh -huh. things and the deformations thereof are? Yes. Yes. I mean. Okay. okay. I have a paper which like essentially proves that if the regularity is n minus one, you can deform to something torque. Oh, so that's exactly it then. Great. Uh, well, so, when it's an extra condition for for the for the main theorem to work. So, but great. so, so let me make sure I understand your theorem. Great. So basically, there's this measurement that says that will, up to this other condition, essentially says will identify which things are torque or essentially or or deformation equivalent to torque. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, so an, an example of something that um, um, is sort of in the middle. Well, you can take uh, you can take uh, an exceptional like you can take p1 and put certain coefficients, and then take the cone over this. And when you do that, this curve you can make it exceptional, and then the cone will have a C star action. So this one will have regularity one, but it's a surface singularity. So the, the, the P1 with certain coefficients will look like an exceptional curve. I mean, to, to do this, you have to sort of choose certain weights that are pretty similar to the E6 singularity. And then the torus, the torus action part will be the one, the part giving you the regularity one. So this will be sort of sitting in the middle between a toric singularity and exceptional singularity in dimension two. Okay, so I am being a bit based with this, but it's, it's just to, to let you know how to uh, create this example. So now uh, I have the second term here that um, say that if you have an n-dimensional R, R regular single KLT singularity, so when I write R regular, it just means of regularity R, it's just to, to abbreviate it. Um, there exists a constant CN only depending on N that satisfies the following. Okay, this, this term is, is far more technical. So it says that you have a predictive variation morphism satisfying the following condition. You extract exactly R plus one divisors over the singularity. If you look at this pair, y comma the sum of these are i divisors, is toroidal at the generic point of the intersection of those divisors. So toroidal just means that the formal completion um, at that point is, is uh, isomorphic to the formal completion of a toric singularity at the close point. Um, and then there exists some, some by support in the exception that makes this, um, this homomorphism to have cochern atmosphere. Okay, so I know I understand this looks like a lot to the yes, but I mean we know we know that the, the I mean the pi one is finite. Uh, oops, um, here you can forget about this M. Um, so this pi one is finite. So essentially, um, so essentially you can always go to the universal cover and try to write theorems about group action from KLT singularity. So let me explain you what this term is saying when you do that. So if you have a group action on a KLT singularity, and this has dimension n and regularity r, then uh, you can find, well, I will just write ZM to the r. I mean, it's not ZM to the r, but I mean, it's just an abelian in a finite abelian group of, of rank equals r. So, you know, essentially ZM to the r, okay? And then you can, also find a blow up of this, which extract R, R plus one things with coefficient one in such a way that the action of the C M minus R will lift here. And then at this point, it will act like a, I mean, it's just the toric action. So can I, maybe I can wait till maybe it's worth waiting a minute, or maybe this is theorem. It's the right point to ask. To, to I have a bit, so a big. Make sure I'm. I think I'm probably getting most of the big picture, but maybe I'm getting all of it, or maybe you can correct me on something. So here's a the fundamental lesson you're saying is you have a singularity, I could say a KLT singularity. We you, we already know you're saying that we should think of it as having a reg uh, um, uh, a in a billion part. Uh, I mean. I want to say finite index, but of course it's already finite, but really a finite, but really like a finite part, uh, a boolean part, and then this and then this unpleasant part. And this division is not canonical. Uh, and the, this part is the C of N part. Uh, and you said that's not canonical. And then this part is the toroidal part. And this part is the exceptional part. Is that right? The exceptional part? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and then what you're saying here is that when you want to understand a singularity, uh, you have such a singularity, then what you're doing is you're going to pick and the ah and regularity of singularity is essentially telling you what the like how big this part is how big this exactly. part is um, and then you're saying that this is somehow telling you that given this factorization into this nice well, I shouldn't say nice and mm -hmm. I don't mean to <laughs> yeah, imply value judgments on exceptional things when is that but if you have your your billion thing and your 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 exceptional thing uh, then th this is given that factorization into these two pieces. Your, it gives you a geometric, it tells you that there's geometry. This is exactly. to be understandable. Uh, and what you're doing is, uh, okay, so I think, uh, uh, great. And you're also saying every KLT singularity 
one really should look at from this point of view. Like this is, when I hear <laughs> ALT singularity, immediately I should think of local geometry as in light of its local fu uh, regional fundamental group. Right. In, okay. Great. Okay, good. Thanks. This is great. So, so this, this says, right, that, I mean, essentially the way that I like to phrase this result is that, I mean, if you take, if you take the, I mean, for instance, if you take the, the action of G, right, on a smooth point, we know that there exists this abelian part, right, uh, which, which is uh, almost the whole group, right, the, the index is, is bounded by the dimension. And now that when you have the abelian part acting on CN, I mean, you can also, the, always diagonalize the action. So you can always choose certain coordinates so, so, such that now it's A is acting theoretically with those coordinates, right? Of course, we cannot make that in a KLT singularity because the KLT singularity doesn't have a torus action, right? So we cannot embed A inside a torus, right? So another way to think about the sequence, right? Um, I mean, another way to, to think about this sequence is that A is somehow the maximal torus of the pi one. Right. If if you have like if you could embed by one regular inside inside some reductive group, then n will be sort of the by group outside, and then a will be sitting inside the maximal torus. Actually, uh, afterwards I I will show you that this is the way that they cook these sort of things. Um, and then, I mean, of course, if you are acting on a KLT singularity, you cannot put. I mean, you cannot factor by a GM action here because not every KLT singularity will have a GM action. But what I'm telling you is that you can do a rational modification such that that happens. Okay, if this is clear. Well, and something that is nice about this result is that uh, you see that it's saying that the rank of A, oh, well, let, let, let's keep going. So, so the color of the bottom, there is this exact sequence. So this is an improvement of the previous uh, theorem. Um, I, actually, let me, let me interrupt again, just ask some random. So if I want to get some interesting KLT singularities, you just suggested a way of getting it, like have a reductive group and have some oh. with them. Is that right? Like, you, like you're telling me, roughly speaking, if I have a reductive group, let's see if I do this right, and I take some finite group inside the reductive group in which the billion parts in the torus, I could cook up interesting, like that. those would be, those quotients yeah. would be killed. Is that right? Right, right. So actually, I, I, I'm working on a, on a preprint right now that uh, we're proving with the authors that if you take any reductive group acting on a smooth point, then uh, the quotient will be KLT. So, and then what can we- And this is dictated precisely by, I mean, I was able to ask that because of your philosophy. So this philosophy- exactly. dictated by and, then, and then when you take these quotients, right? The abelian part and the non-abelian part of the, of the fundamental of the quotient actually comes from G. So, mm -hmm. so it's a really, I mean, you know, it's a really nice machine to produce examples of KLT singularity. Oh, great. Okay. I feel like I'm and it produces, produces examples in the whole range from exceptional to toric, right? If, well, if G is a torus, it produces something toric. And if G is a really special group, like a sort of exceptional groups, it will produce exceptional singularity. Okay, so the, the, the color of the previous term is that there is this exact sequence, right? Uh, same than this four, but now uh, the rank of A is at most the regularity plus one. And this is always less or equal than the dimension. So we found a better bound for the rank of the abelian part. I mean, this is, I mean, for instance, if the singularity is exceptional, then this will be just ZM. And in the, in this in the, is independent of the dimension. If you look at exceptional singularities of any dimension, then the abelian part, I mean, essentially this is saying that exceptional singularities of any dimension, their fundamental group is almost a cyclic group. And if exceptional. And then the non-abelian part again has all the most CN. So the non-abelian part only depends on the on, on the dimension, and the abelian part only depends on the regularity. It's independent of the dimension of the singularity. And I mean, what what is something that I uh, one hopes with the, to to work with this in the future is that I mean, when you run a minimal model program, you sort of expect that the regularity will will be preserved under splits. But I mean, that's that's something that will come in the future. So. And then now, I mean, we all not only have this result, but now we have an actual, right, an, an actual geometric realization of that, uh, of that, um, of that exact sequence, right? Because the the abelian part comes from this blow up. Because this one is actually this one is abelian, because the the fundamental group of, of a toric singularity is always abelian. So the image now we know what A is. A is just the image of of, of this. 
of these regional fundamentals of why you work. Okay, so I, let, let me do a little summary of, um, of what we have so far. So in 2020, we proved this Jordan property holds for n-dimensional KLT singularities. And in 2021, we proved the Jordan property holds for n-dimensional KLT singularities and it can be realized geometrically with this blow up, right? And then as a consequence, we have these this extra things about the regularity. And then the question that, that um, I've been thinking about and actually I can prove that it has some some relations with, with this um, big problem, which is termination of flips in, in the minimal problem program. Can we realize this, this um, can we realize this blow up effectively? So essentially, when you when you have this blow up, you extract certain divisors S1, SR plus one here. Okay. And then you can uh, look at these numbers, which are the log discrepancy. And the question is, can we bound them above? So essentially say that, so we have this geometric realization of the fundamental group, right? But this geometric realization depends on certain blow up. And maybe that blow up is really, is really high. I mean, you have to blow up things with really high log discrepancy. So essentially you have to blow up an ideal whose uh, generators have really high degree. So we try to avoid that. We try to keep things sort of bound. So if, if one can prove this sort of, I mean, if one can answer this sort of question positively, it means that we will be able to effectively compare the fundamental groups of the KLT singularity with the quotient, with a quotient singularity that lives on top of there, or, or, or a toric singularity that lives on top of there. Okay. So let me let's see if I can ask this question. Well, so you're, some okay, so you've got this Jordan property, which mm -hmm. rely and Jordan's theorem. It sounds like it relies on this crazy, not well. No, normal people would say MMP is crazy, but the 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 with the uh, uh, with this sort of uh, PD uh, this other I don't know lower tech math to mm -hmm. to do things. Uh, and you're but if you're doing anything constructing geometric incarnations of these things, you must be using MMP. You must be living. You're not using Jordan at all. It's using full Algebraic geometry, mm -hmm. uh, right? So, is so this actually reproves Jordan's theorem. Right. That's, what, that's <laughs> my question. That's what yes. So this would actually this actually reproves reproves Jordan. Uh, this reproves um, Jordan's theorem using. I mean, MMP. I mean, you use the boundedness of final varieties. So I don't know if that's you know, it's like a really heavy, heavy thing. But um, just roughly, could you say how the C of n's compare from the Jordan approach to the MMP approach? Although uh, well, the CNs are factorial in Jordan's approach. And the right. CNs are who knows what. They're, they're oh, okay, they just exist. Not they're ineffective. Not ineffective. Oh. Currently okay. ineffective, right? I think. I see. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So currently, the MMP in effect, the CNs are ineffective. They're good for right. I mean, but you, I mean, from recent results on the minimum prime, we, we I mean, you know all these constants that we have that that we know they exist. It seems to be really ugly. You <laughs> know, so so probably this CN is something huge. Okay, so I mean. I think that I have like around uh, 12 minutes left, or maybe a bit more. Yeah, but yeah, about 12, 12, 15 minutes. Okay, so let me at least, uh, maybe I will mention the proof of the second term, but let me at least give you a sketch of the proof of the Jordan property. So, so just start with a, with a n minus one dimension of finite pair. So what do I mean with this? Um, this means that negative ke plus delta E is uh, big on net. And then E delta E has scale T singularity. So nice singularities and uh, positive here of a true. Okay, so, so then there is a term which is due to a lot of people. Uh, I would say, well, not a lot, well, uh, Janash has some, some work on it and then also Brokorov and Shramov have some work on it that say that you can find a point on a finite variety such that if you look at the regional fundamental group of the point, and then you look at the natural map to the fundamental group of, of E. Um, so when I write this notation, fundamental group of E, comma delta E, I, I mean the same than before. I mean, you subtract delta E and then you question by this loop. So it's essentially all the covers of the projected variety such that when you pull back ke e plus delta e, you are still you are still a log pair. So for, for instance, if you take p two, I don't know, uh, with three lines with coefficient one half, 
I think that in this case, you get uh, pi one of P2 with these three lines with coefficient one half will be um, actually Z, Z mod two Z. You can, I mean, you ramify once over the three lines and then you get, sorry, this would be Z mod two Z cube. I mean, you can ramify essentially once along each, cube, each line. Okay. So what is the property of this homomorphism is that it's almost trajective. So the, the index of the image is bounded by a constant on the image. Okay, so how do you understand this result? What this result says is that if you have a finite variety, for instance, a, a, a finite variety, if you take any loop in the variety, you can, you can find a point such as almost any loop contracted nearby the point. So essentially the, the, whole, the whole fundamental group is sort of supported at a single point. Of course, this is not true for smooth varieties of general type, right? Because, for instance, the torus right, has, has loops that you cannot contract to, to, to a point in the torus. Any abelian variety won't have this property. But this is that when your curvature is positive, then the whole topology, almost the whole topology can be detected by a single point. So did you say that was like an obvious fact or a known fact? No, no, no. This, this, this is a consequence of, of work of two of two mathematicians on automorphism of rationally connected variety. So, so this is a deep fact of rationally connected variety. This is right. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so now we have an uh, dimensional T germ, right? And and what we do often in the minimum mode program to study singularities is to find some special blow up over it. So you try to blow up certain in such a way that exceptional divisors will be a projective variety with nice conditions. And something that we know in the minimal model program is that um, you can do something that we call a PLT blow up, which is essentially extract a phenotype variety over a PLT singularity. So essentially for any PLT singularity, you can perform a blow up such as the exceptional is a phenotype variety. But then, I mean, what we're trying to study, right? I mean, we have this point X here, and then we have this exceptional X here, right? And we're trying to study the fundamental group of, let's say, small disk. I mean, let's say that, let's think about isolated singularity just to make our life simpler for now, right? But when you do this blow up, this, this analytic neighborhood will sort of live here, right? I mean, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the fundamental group doesn't see the blow up, right? Because we're subtracting the point because the singular point. So, so these are uh, different work systems, right? On the smooth loss. But then one can try to do something natural, which is retracting this neighborhood inside E. And this is actually something that we can do due to the Whitney, uh, the, um, the Whitney retraction term. So there is an exact sequence. Uh, there is some, um, some group, I mean, there is some open set V such that there is exact, this exact sequence uh, that comes from the Whitney stratification. And let me just say that this V is an analytic open open subset of X for we, that rejects into the regional fundamental group. So the point is that when you have this Whitney, I mean, when you have this exceptional divisor and then this analytic neighborhood around it, I mean, the Whitney retraction won't be a disk bundle on the whole E. So you, you may need to delete certain things here on which, on which the Whitney retraction is not a disk bundle. And then after, after deleting that, you get this open set V, which is not an algebraic variety. It's not an open algebraic variety. It's actually an open analytic subset. And the fundamental group of V projects into the regional one that we want. So essentially subtracting these analytic black things doesn't change. I mean, it, it may change your fundamental group, but it will just make it larger. So you see that if we can prove the Jordan property for this guy, then it will follow for this guy because we have this rejecting mark. So, so you definitively left the algebra category at this point. You're, you're at thinking. this point, yes. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying that the first paper that came out on this on this on this theory was was pretty analytic. Like uh, the second one, I, I, I did a completely um, algebraic argument, but I mean that I, I will stick to just the proof of the first one for this talk. Okay, so so one can prove that there is an open subset of E in which the disk bundle that gives you the, the Whitney retraction will trivialize. And then um, if you restrict to this open set, you can prove that the map, the homomorphism uh, from the regional fundamental group of, of this point E that sees almost all the loops to the open set on, on E is still almost rejected. So almost here meaning that the image has the, the image has co-kernel bounded uh, by a constant CN. 
Okay. So just remember that this map is almost rejected. Okay, so what we do now is that, uh, well, this group may not be finite, but um, because we deleted from collimation one point, and that usually kills the finiteness of the fundamental group really fast. But we still know that is uh, abelian, and we still control the rank. So this requires some inductive hypothesis. But I mean, but what I can mention is that, well, you see that this this group, this group here, is the regional fundamental group. I mean, if you start with a n-dimensional shell singularity. You uh, do this blow up, and then this one is an n minus one dimensional So we can uh, we can assume the theorem for e for this point e in the in the fan of our, in the fan of the variety e, and we can assume the theorem for for this guy. So this one will have the exact sequence with abelian and non abelian form. The base case is the two dimensional case in which all these singularities are quotients. So so one can do that by hand essentially the the surface case. Okay, so when you subtract this, uh, these things of coordination one, you may lose the finiteness, but you still have this Jordan property, even if you subtract things of coordination. Uh, so this is what it says afterwards. However, we, we know that such group is still a billion of rank at most n minus one. Well, it shouldn't say a billion, it should say almost a billion of rank at most n. Okay. Okay, but then we, we put all these groups and and, and things that I have mentioned together in the following diagram, right? So this is the disk bundle of the of the Whitney refraction. So this is the place where the I mean this is the open set in which the Whitney refraction trivializes, and this is this special point, right? That this is this special point on which uh, almost all the loops will retract. But but what we uh, what what I just said, um, okay. What I just said is that this behaves like a KLT singularity of dimension n minus one. So this guy here satisfies the Jordan property um, in dimension n minus one. But then when you just do uh, cross z, right, it will satisfy the KLT property now with rank at most n. But then this is almost rejected. This is the open set inside an algebraic variety, so this is almost also almost rejective. Uh, no, actually, wait. Um, this is subjective, right? Because it's the open set of an algebraic variety, which is normal, so the phi one will reject. So then, by the five lemma, we get the four lemma. We get that this is subjective, and we also say that this is subjective. So the map from the top thing to the bottom thing will be almost subjective. So this one will have the Jordan property with uh, with random motion. So this is essentially the idea of the proof. The idea of the proof is you know doing this blow up, studying a special point in the exceptional divisor, and then proving that from these exceptional points downstairs you almost have uh, a surjection. So then an induction of the dimension do, does the trick. Okay, so um, actually this is slides were from a from a longer talk that I gave. Uh, at some other university uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I think I will stop here. I think this I will stop. Would we'll, we'll stop. Great. Let's uh, now we can unmute ourselves and thank and thank you again for a great talk.